Number five, a kicker in a football game attempts a 50-yard field goal from the goalpost. The ball is on the ground and is kicked with an initial velocity of 81 feet per second at an angle of 66 degrees. The height of the crossbar of the goal is 10 feet, as shown in the diagram. For the field goal to be good, a ball must, must pass over the crossbar and between the uprights. Assuming the kick is straight and passes between the uprights, which conclusion is true? So which means is the ball's kicked and it's not like it's going to go over here or over here or what we have to find out according to these is does this ball as it's coming near it, does it hit the ground in front? Will it actually hit the crossbar? Uh, does it hit this piece? So B was saying it land, it's kind of somewhere down here. C says it hits this bar, so it's no good. Or, or no, C, I'm sorry, says it goes through. D says it hits this, so we can't det determine. We don't know if it hits this and bounces down here or hits it and bounces through. So that's what we're going to try to figure out. This is going to be parametric motion. So I'm going to go over here to our formula chart, and if we look down on projectile motion, which is parametrics, we get these two equations. These are the equations we're going to use. So I'm going to copy these down real quick. We have that x equals, uh, let's go back over here and look at it, it's parentheses, the v naught, that just stands for the original velocity, times the cosine of the angle, times t, and our y value will equal negative one half g t squared plus, basically the same uh, equation as above, just with sine. Oops, that needs to be outside the parentheses. Let me erase this real quick. And then there's this y0. And y0 just represents the initial height. On this problem, it says uh, we're 50 yards away. So that's a horizontal distance. So we're kicking 50 yards away. That's what that first value is. It's not a speed. We have a horizontal distance of 50 yards. And the ball is on the ground. It's kicked with an initial velocity of 81 feet per second. So 81 is our initial velocity. And this is feet per second. And the angle, theta, is 66 degrees. So now, as we look through there, there's only one other piece of information I need. It's kicked from the ground. I'm going to highlight that. Hit from the ground. That means that y0 is actually 0 has a height of zero. The other thing that's really important is to figure out what gravity is. If I go to the formula chart, there are two different gravity values. Gravity is either 32 feet per second or 9.8 if the units are meters. This problem was saying yards and feet. So I'm going to use the 32. So here we're going to say gravity is 32 feet per second squared. Now, the one thing that really is going to make a difference is this is feet, this is feet, this is feet. This is yards. We need to change this to say 150 feet. Now I got that by saying one yard equals three feet. And so what I did is 50 yards times three feet over one yard. That would cancel that out, and that would equal 150 feet. That's how I got that. So. Anyways, uh, we're going to use 150 feet here. So let's go to our calculator and see what we come up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, to graphs. I'm going to choose parametrics. And I'll type in my equation. It was parentheses. The, it was kicked at 81 feet per second. And the x is cosine at 66 degrees. Let me make sure I put the degree button there. And then you put the T in the outside. That's what a lot of people forget is that T. Now we come down here, and this part of the equation was negative. It's a fraction. One half. And then gravity, we said, was 32. And then we have T squared plus parentheses 81 sine of 66 degrees. Don't forget the T on the outside. By the way, the number two mistake is people don't they forget that plus right there. And then the initial height was zero. So we don't even have to put plus zero, but I will. There it is. Now this is referring to how much time. We don't need any negative time. And this will be the ball probably won't even be in the air nearly this long, but I'll leave it 
or actually I'll shorten it a little bit. I'm going to shorten it to four seconds. Otherwise, I bet you the graph will go way underneath the ground. So when I hit enter, you'll see that's the flight of the ball. Now I can't see very much of it, so I'm going to go menu, zoom, which is under window, and zoom fit. And now you can see this. Now I took off too much time. Apparently the ball was in the air longer than four seconds. So I'll go back, I'll teach you my equation, I'll press some tab, I'm pressing up. And I'll go, go ahead and put this at six seconds to see. Now the ball goes underneath the ground. Now what I want to know is when that ball gets to a height of 10 feet, where uh, at a height of 10 feet, how far has it traveled? That's what we want to know. Uh, to help us out, what you could add if you wanted to, is you could go menu, graph entry, uh, graph entry, and I'm just in there no, normal function. I want to put 10 in. This will represent the height of, uh, and let me change the color on that. I'll take it from this equation. And I will put it down on this equation. This way it'll be red. Okay, this represents the height of the goalpost. Now we want to know how far away is this when they cross. Unfortunately, I can't do intersection. I have these with a parametric and a function type graph, but I can trace this. So I want to trace this graph. And as I trace it, I want to be looking, whoa, calculator's going crazy. I want to look for how far is this graph in relation to uh, that red line down there. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go menu, trace, and I'm going to do trace step. And I'm going to change it to where it's right now automatic, it's counting by a tenth of a second. I don't want to count by that much. I'm going to change it to like a, a, a hundredth of a second, so 0 0.01. And now I'm going to trace down and watch this ball's flight and see what happens. So as I keep on going down, I'm going to see where these cross. We're getting closer and closer and closer. And I right now am hitting that crossbar. So that's a height of 10 feet. 10.4 right there, that's 9.69, which means the ball has traveled 148 feet. So when the ball has traveled 148 feet, it's right at that height, which means we need to go two more feet to see what happens. When it's at a two more feet, we now find out that the ball is 6.16 feet in the air, 150 feet away, which means this ball is not going to go through it. It's actually going to pass underneath. D would be the correct answer here because at 150 feet, we had a height of 6.16, I believe. And that was a time value of, if you've got that, not that we need to know it, 4.54 seconds. Now there's another way of doing this. Uh, what we could have also done is, um, now that we, or if you want to work through this again, Instead of plugging all this in the same way, if I would have put in a 10 feet here, um, I could have solved this equation and done some roots. I'll show you. So, like, let me uh, get some extra space to write here. If I would have plugged in 10 for my y, because that was the height that the ball needs to be, into the equation and simplified everything else that we had earlier, I can use the calculator to help me solve this. Um, so here's this equation that we had. Now all I need to do is move this 10 over to the other side, because what I'm going to use the calculator for is I'm going to set this equal to 0 on the left side. So if I had this equal to 0 over here, because I subtracted 10, and subtract 10 from there, what would happen, I'm going to simplify this. This would be negative 16 t squared plus that value which I'm going to now just say is, um, well, I'll just leave it the way it is. I could go to the calculator and solve by roots like this. I go over to uh, just a calculate screen. I can go menu, algebra, polynomial tools, find roots. And there's going to be two roots. So the a squared, that's referring to what's in front of the squared term. In front of the squared term is negative 16. So I'll put negative 16 here. Now the next part, I'm going to put in that parentheses I had, which was 81 sine of 66 degrees. And you don't include the t's here. The calculator, 
going on. The calculator is automatically going to do that. You're just putting what's in front. And then, sorry, this is messing up. And now I'll put the negative 10 here. Okay, now when I hit OK, I hit Enter, and this will tell me the time values that it was at the, those heights. So uh, it was 4.48 seconds that I had a height of 10 feet. And so if I would have ta taken this, this is the, um, these are the two different routes. So it, it crossed 10 feet at 0.13 seconds. Let me show you the picture here. Um, that right there would be like that, one, that first time. The second one would be that second time, right? Uh, let me go back over here. That would be the other time. And so if you plug that in now into the x equation, we can figure out exactly how far away the graph was. So instead of saying 81 cosine of 66 degrees with a t, now we know our time values. So the second time value was right here. If I would type that in, times 4.5. Four eight five four eight uh, five five six, and I'll just stop there. That's enough. Press enter. It would have said the ball, when it was ten feet high, it was only one hundred forty-seven point seven feet away. So yeah, it's not going to go far enough. If we originally wanted to know the roots, we could have done that as well, just plugging in the zero. But we want to know what happens with the height as it relates to ten feet.